Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Um, happy Fool, or is it Happy Fool, April Fool's Day? It's like, this is no fooling, though. We are here doing writing. We're here looking at the ideas of six traits, because I'm walking you through each trait, each step of the time. And we're doing process writing, <clears throat> um, based writing, which I've already showed this, and this is already up on the documents that you can get. Um, this also is, we're looking at ideas, and we have a lot more traits. We have five more traits to go through, and we haven't even gotten out of ideas yet. So ideas is what we did yesterday, and that's up on my board that I have behind me, my makeshift board. You're in my art room still, so you see my artwork behind me on the wall and different things and my clay and everything else. So it's a creative type of atmosphere, which is what we're we're doing right now is creating and we're creating the writing piece. So I'm going to review real quickly. I started with the process-based writing for review and also the rubric for ideas because remember we're looking at number five and number five is important because that's going to give us our A. That's the 100% that we want to go for. We want our paper to be clear, crystal clear. We want the first sentence to the last to be very clear. We don't want a lot of ambiguous things, ambiguous big word meaning that we don't want a lot of stuff and things just thrown in there to make it look like it's a long paper. We want specifics we're organizing our paper to make sure that every paragraph has exactly what we need in it in order for it to move forward. And we're using picture books in order to achieve that. Remember, we're only in ideas. So we have to do this five different times or with five or six or more picture books. So that way you get the idea. Okay. We also want every detail relating to the main idea, which is Sebastian. And Sebastian is the rescue kitty. Okay. And Misty is my kitty that's basically teaching him all the little details that he needs to have. We're going from general to very specific. So we want to be very specific in details in our evidence, our facts. We want them to be reliable and verifiable because this is going to, mat this is going to match later on to argument and other items that you're going to have to do in new learning when you do your writing, when you do your um, papers. They're, this is what they're looking for. This is going to give you a higher score. Your word choice, the words that you use now will determine exactly how that um, assignment will be graded. The earn grade that you're going to earn from that is going to determine how well you planned out each of your writing pieces. Okay. Yesterday we made it through paragraph one, which is up here, our introductory paragraph. And remember, we don't count it. Okay, we count we counted at paragraph one, which is actually the second paragraph, um, because that gives us a full-bodied essay that gives us the details that we need, along with conclusion and everything too. So we're looking at paragraph one here. We already looked at specific examples of Sebastian. We looked at ball, food, toys, habits, bed, playtime, um, teeth like a baby, specific toys that we mentioned, and Sebastian can play. Hopefully you can see this, there it is. Sebastian can play for hours with his favorite toys. He has a mouse ball teddy bear, and we did the work cited of Chewy.com. Saying that, I'm going to go ahead and put up the next set, because we're going to finish reading the picture book that we were reading, so you can get the ideas of the picture book. I'm going to pull this back up here. And paragraph three is trait writing ideas, and I posted my delightful timeline on the Google um, Classroom so that you can actually see the third paragraph, paragraph number three, and that's example. Sebastian loves his toys as he throws them into the air, plays catch, and can entertain himself. And I could put for hours, but I didn't. I stopped it himself, okay? For this time, I might revise it later and add that, I don't know, okay? I have watched this playful kitty race through the house at top speed and stop on a dime. That's very detailed orientated, isn't it? That's very specific, and that's what we want to do. Our rubric tells us that's exactly what we need in our sentences. Careful to choose interesting, unusual details that would keep readers reading. That would keep me reading because I would want to know how does he play, how fast is he racing across the house, who is chasing him, or is he just chasing himself? Sebastian has leaped to catch his tail or chase Misty. 
to grab her tail. So that sets me up for more sentences later on when I want to get very specific. Because remember, I'm just in ideas. I haven't even looked at word choice. I haven't looked at sense fluency. And I haven't looked at organization yet. So we still have to go there. Um, then Misty lets out a high-pitched meow. She literally screams and runs from Sebastian, which takes us to our details of our storybook that I was reading yesterday with the, not the brown crayon, but the beige crayon. And the beige crayon basically is really sad because the brown crayon gets all the attention, just like Sebastian is getting all the attention right now. And Misty is trying to teach him there's a time and a place and you don't always grab somebody's tail. So here's an example of ideas that Duncan did for gray, okay? Gray crayon here, you're killing me. I know you have, you love elephants and I know that elephants are gray and that is a lot of space to color all by myself and don't even get me started on rhinos. Oh my gosh, humpback whales, you know how, how, I can't read that word. I don't know. You know how I am after handling one of those things. Such big animals. And he puts big in capitals and bold. Baby penguins and gray, you know, so are very, so are very tiny or any rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Because pebbles are small. And he wouldn't have to touch and he wouldn't have to color as much gray. Look at all that gray that he put on that page. Your friend, tired friend, Gray Crayon. Okay, and Gray Crayon is like exhausted and almost dwindling down to nothing. And Pebbles, I'm sure he would love a lot better. Details, evidence, details, facts is where we're leading to paragraph four, supporting facts. And here we have a lot of supporting facts. We're creating supporting facts in paragraph three and in paragraph four as well. So here we are. Oh my goodness, we have a black sheet of paper here on this one, but we have white over here and you might not be able to see. See the two eyes and the nose, the pink little nose here, okay? This is Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? Most of the time, I'm the same color as the page you're using me on, white. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to color snow or to fill an empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, White Crayon. And then White Cat in the Snow by Duncan is on this page, but he colored it all white, even though it's on the white page, except for the eyes and the pink nose. So definitely, oh, and there's polar bear, I do believe, with a little crown, I don't know. And that's supposed to be snow. So white crayon gets used a lot. And then he says, oh my gosh, hi Duncan, I hate being used to draw the outline of things. Things that are colored in, my, in by other colors all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw. Nice beach ball and then fill in the colors of the ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, black crayon. And then it shows black rainbow here. And then it shows beach ball black, black crayon, and swim trucks and dress in black. That would be nice. A change of pace, right? Well, that's evidence. Those are facts. He lists many of the facts for black crayon. In fact, each of the crayons have facts that they've listed. Just like we're going to list when we go ahead and do this for sentence fluency and word choice, we're going to add sentences to the ideas. Remember, this is just ideas. We haven't even added the other traits yet. So here's another idea. Wow, here is green crayon. And green crayon is the big dinosaurs that he has specifically drawn. Dear Duncan, as Green Crayon, I am writing for two reasons. One is to say that I like my work lo loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs, and frogs. I have no problems with, um, I have no problems and wish to congratulate you on a very successful, colorful things green. Career so far. The season, the second reason I write to my 
for my friends, yellow crayon and orange crayon, who are no longer speaking to each other, by the way. Both crayons feel they should be the color of the sun, so they're fighting. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy, and it's in capitals, exclamation point, your happy friend, green crayon. There you go, green crayon. Happy farm. Um, happy farm is yellow crayon. Remember, yellow crayon's fighting with orange. So yellow crayon here, I need to tell orange crayon that I am the color of the sun. I would tell him, but we are no longer speaking, and I can prove I'm the color of the sun, too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun, and your happy farm. Coloring book here. See? Yellow sun. Proof. Evidence. Facts. <sighs> That's part of our next one, facts, supporting details, valuable, very valuable information, absolutely. So you can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on the field of yellow corn here in the color book. Your pal and the true color of the sun, yellow crayon, right here. Proof, evidence, evidence, supporting details, valuable. No matter what you're writing, you have to have valuable facts. Here we go. Oh my goodness, here we are. Guess who? Orange. Dear Duncan, I see Yellow Crayon already talked to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the color of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. So we both know I am clearly the color of the sun because on Thursday, you used me to color the sun. The sun on both the monkey island and meet the zookeeper. Proof. Both of those pages have orange. Day at the zoo coloring book. Orange. Aren't you glad I'm here? Yeah, I said that right. Orange, you glad I'm here? Ha <laughs> Your pal. And the real color of the sun. Orange crayon. Oh my. We have a, a fight, an argument. Who is going to win? Then I turn the page and I have blue and blue is laying down here. Hmm. But then there's a big river with an ocean liner blue and rain that's falling down into the ocean. Oh my. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favorite color this past year. Wow. And the, and the year before. Oh my. And the year before that. I have really enjoyed all those oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds, and clear skies. But the bad news is that I am so short and stubby, I can't even see over the railing in the cram box anymore. I need a break. Your very stubby friend, little crayon. Stubby, yes, he's wore out, poor blue. Then I go to pink. All you girls know pink is your favorite color. Sorry, guys, but some of you, yes, pink is probably your favorite color, too. Let's just cover all the bases. We don't want an argument between that. We already have an argument going on between orange and yellow. Duncan, okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once in the past year. Uh-oh. It's because you think I am a girl's color, isn't it? See, I told you. Uh-oh. Speaking of which, please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color in her little princess coloring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now back to us. Could you please, please use me sometime to color the occasional pink dinosaur or monster at, um, or cowboy? Goodness knows they could use a splash of color. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Matter of fact... It's a little perturbed. What do we have here? Crayon box empty. We have another crayon. And, oh, it's the peach crayon. Hey, Duncan, it's me, peach crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapping? Now I'm naked and too embarrassed to leave the crayon box. Oh, and there is, oh gosh. I don't even know. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? No. Against the law. Don't do it. I need some clothes. Help! Your naked friend, Peach Crayon. 
Uh-oh, big dilemma. But facts, important and valuable? Yeah, I think so. So here, well, poor Duncan just wanted to color, and of course he wanted his crayons to be happy. And that gave him an idea, since he got all the letters from his crayon box. So, yes, I'm licking my fingers, I'm sorry. When Duncan showed his teacher his new his new picture, she gave him an A for coloring. What do you think happened? I see all the colors in the crayon box. All of them. And an A plus for creativity. So instead of using just one or two here and there, he used all of them. So, and this is Drew Daywalt. That's the author in the back of the book. If you ever want to know, he's a director and film of TV. His work has been featured on Disney, MTV, Fear Net, and Sci-Fi. He lives in Southern California with his wife and their two children. His favorite crayon is black, although he makes sure to use all the crayons so that they never quit. Do you know why his favorite crayon is black? What I learned when I did um, my art is that black has all the colors in the crayon box. Has the all the colors in the in the rainbow. So black is his favorite color. Cool. Oliver Jeffers creates art for children and adults alike. He's the one who did the picture books. He's the one that did the illustrations in here in this book. Um, the incredible book Eating Boy and this moose, moose belongs to me, lost and found, including stuck. Um, he's uh, spots on the New York Times bestseller list. Oliver is also the recipient of New York Times Best Illustrated Book of the Year, honored for the Hueys in um, the new sweater, originally from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Oliver now lives and creates art in Brooklyn, New York. His favorite color is striped. All the colors again. So saying that, that gives me the idea we go back here, and I'm at 17 minutes. Oh my goodness, and time really flies, so I have three minutes, and I didn't think I was hopeful I would get through paragraph four as our baseline so we can move on from there. So every day we have a little bit more, okay? So saying that, remember, you can get this on my delightful timeline, and it actually quizzes you on the information that I have on here, and will match. So this, trait writing ideas, facts, supporting facts, variable, valuable, valuable facts, indeed, in paragraph four. Important for kittens to learn from other kittens and cats. That's what I'm going to put in paragraph four, because Sebastian is learning from Misty. So that is crystal clear on my rubric to make sure that everyone knows that this little kitty is learning from another cat. No longer has his mom, don't know where his mom's at at all, but he needs to learn social skills, behaviors, that will be acceptable to other cats. And so Misty is a very important commodity right now, a very important person, valuable in his life, okay? Important kittens learn social skills. Do not bite at the wrong time. You can only bite certain things, and my tail, you are not biting, okay? Do not always chase, cannot always chase, and she has turned around and nipped him before, saying we're not chasing right now, okay? Time to run and a time to sleep. They sleep within six feet of each other. It's so cute. And they have social distancing going on for sure. And a time to just hang out. And they sit within six feet or eight feet of each other and just look at each other. And then he'll get up and play and she'll put up with it. Misty does. But Misty is guiding him and telling him what he can do, when he can do it, how he can do it, which is perfect. Sebastian and Misty. Oh, I'm sorry. Reliable. Misty is teaching him social skills. Correct. Misty runs from Sebastian to teach him how to chase correctly. She'll turn around and then she chases him to teach him and tell him to behave and nips at him when she needs to, which is very perfect because mommy doesn't have to do it here. Misty's doing it for me. Also, fiction. What's false? What's false is Sebastian and Misty are not cartoon characters. We don't exaggerate what they're doing. We don't um, do other things like that. We write about logical habits, what cats really like to do, or what kittens really like to do, where they live, how they live, and how they learn from each other. So that is all going to be added to paragraph four when we get to sentence fluency, when we add um, our organization, and we add our words, our word choice as well. So a lot has gone into this already, and we're still in the idea stage. 
what we're going to focus on tomorrow is at 1957, 58. So is compare details, contrast details, compare and contrast. I do this all the time. You're going to similarities, differences, and then write about the two. So we're going to separate it. And then I have Chewy.com because I have to cite my sources and PetSmart.com. I'm all out of time. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. I hope you guys are enjoying. Remember, this is Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye.